Hi, how is everyone doing? This is Minari and today I just want to talk about JLJ randomly. Like, there is some some interesting stuff in here I wanna kinda wanna talk about still for masterpiece face of JLJ because there's actually some some new information that actually explains the meaning behind the chaotic environment surrounding that record. And I also like, really want to talk about how dark JLJ actually was, because like, yeah, it, it it's really fucked up if you like, look up all the bits of information, like the imagery and all that, so let's start with that, so, um, some of you probably know that there is a bit of text told in a bad name origin website, uh, Oh yeah, and also like the meaning, meaning behind the band's name, and it's meant to be um, religious satire, and yeah, and like there is the text that says that familiar backdrop in JLJ live shows was naked Jesus with syringe phallus, and like I'm not really good with English, like. I can speak it and, and all that, but there are some words that I don't know and I sometimes have to look up what they mean and phallus, for those that don't know, it's like object that resembles penis or erect penis and like she's with like mm, erect penis that looks like a syringe in JLJ live shows like that's really dark and it's really offensive stuff, really. And like, yeah, Chelsea went all out on on mocking religion, and it's like I I'm okay with that. Like, it's it's art. It's it's just fictional stuff, and it's not meant to like actually hurt anyone. But, but yeah, Chelsea was really dark and Jeff really like went all out on that. Of course he was really young back then and he probably did a lot of, a lot of stupid stuff with JLJ when it comes to imagery. But yeah, and like still for masterpiece, like Jeff has always said that it 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 has like chaotic environment and he's a better person now but he's never like explained what he me means by that and i think yesterday a few days ago like he was on the server and we talked about stuff and i mentioned this text that patrick sent me once and i will read that for you and i will pr probably when I'm editing this video, I add the text on the screen, but... Well, Jeff used to destroy things in the room, or he had, we had a room from the studio that we used. It was a long room and we had lots of musical equipment in there, and sometimes it would get a little destroyed after he drink, drink a lot of vodka and whatnot, but yeah, that was probably when he destroyed the studio, we had to rebuild it. And Jeff explains that with I was ordinary sometimes vodka equals violence back then and let's see okay yeah it doesn't not really say anything else about I'm looking this information from my phone in in discord so let's see okay he yeah he does not say anything else about that but yeah, this explains a lot. And oh yeah, he also s said stuff like, yeah, when I asked about it, asked asked about it be before I added that te I showed that text to him. The uh, still for Masters period was very turbulent. I don't think I could survive another. I could probably survive actually, but not not the rest of the band. And like. And he adds to that, especially a certain previously interviewed guitarist who took a fly and mixed that to the face. <laughs> yeah, that's actually funny. And I remember he when I talked with him on email at the start of 
started the whole thing with me doing videos on that and I contacted Seth, Jeff. He also said that he once uh, attacked in, in live show, he, I think, yeah, it was, yeah, in live show that actually he, there was a video, even that, no, there wasn't a video, he wished that he had a video of that, I think, it was long ago, back in 2015 or 16. Um, he said that, um, yeah, there, or yeah, was it about a video? Yeah, I think it was a video where he, like, he was hitting a guitarist on live show, live show, um, with a mix stand because he was missing his cue because he was looking at his pager, and yeah, and of course, yeah, and I think I've said him said before, but but Chef Chef wanted everything to go perfect perfectly during live shows, and he would get angry if anything went wrong. And yeah, Patrick said that too. In that interview that uh, inhaler and showed it back then but yeah this kind of this will explain uh, what he means with uh, with chaotic period during still for master masterpiece and yeah and actually he talked about that new JLJ album and there is single coming this month and or Hopefully it will come and there will be a cover too in that single single or how do you pronounce that word? But it will be from mother motherhead actually and um, I don't remember what the name name for that song was but I'll add it to the later later to the video and um, New JLJ will be better production quality than anything else from JLJ that being said, a lot of the songs were new, are newborn rejects because they were just pure JLJ and had to ad I had to admit it. So they aren't repres representative of what I can do today, or what I can do today, like he wrote. But I think he meant what I can do today. Um, with newborn, what I'm working on now, the final mix is in my mind throughout the entire process. With what is new JLJ or new JLJ, I was just go 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 clean it up later. New JLJ was recorded using Logic Pro X, but all newborn will be done using Ableton. My first tree on in on its way here now. And let's see what else he. Yeah, he says that. I can tell you the proud qu production quality of new JLJ. Rough mix from the, from the single that is coming this month anyway. And I'll see if there's anything else he said. Just want to make sure. Sure that I have everything talked about in this video. And, uh, yeah, no, no. No. But yeah, that's what he said about the new single that is coming. Coming this month hopefully we will see he has kind of delayed uh, Nullborn release and all that but you know he's busy he has family now and he has work and everything he like he was when he had JLJ in the 90s he was young and he had yeah like he said once he had he had time but no money but now he's money but no time so that's that's what happens when you get older Older, of course and finally I wanna talk about some information that I have gathered in a text file I went in some emails that I have I, I have all saved in one note actually actually or I think most of it and maybe everything everything no not everything but most of the important parts or all the important parts from those email exchanges from back then. And um, original name Jesus Loves Chunkies for a couple of years, so yeah, it was it was written like that originally. And it's it, there's still like you can see in I think on Salt there is like U is a V on. I think in 
in Jesus, the word Jesus, there is a V instead of U. And sample on an exit, there's a sample used in that. I think you can hear it the best on that quiet part before it goes to that maniac laughing and all that. I will add at the at um I will add that part to this video. Video. Yeah, you can hear it, it's like kind of robotic and all that, like, of course, like, we didn't really know what is the meaning or what is the concept in, in Great Escape from Paradise, really, but we will probably know when we do that interview, we do it, no, no plans when it will happen or anything, of course, uh, because, um, like, like time zones and all that, like, when I have talked with him, it's usually been early morning or really like like in in here in Finland it's been like 5 a.m. 9 a.m. kind of thing. And the first live show for JLJ, uh, it was what was just Q A D E X sequencer running drum machine and K K four, or I think like samples or or whatever I don't know. Uh, me on guitar and vocal and Patrick on guitar keys. It was a pretty small crowd, most of which we knew. And Patrick actually mentioned how many people later JLJ had on live shows and it was apparently like 200-300 people. And Jeff always said that they were, like the audience was, well, audiences were small, but for well, a band like JLJ that is like real low on money and uh, real small band like that amount of people is is actually big I think but of course when you compare it to band like Slipknot where there's like thousands of people yeah of course it's small but for JLJ 200-300 is, is quite big actually I was always thinking like when he made small it was like less than 100 and for salt, the equipment used was Kawaii K4, Kawaii QADEX sequencer, Yamaha MT4X cassette multi-tracker, I think that was how it was recorded, or what it, that was the equipment used for recording the music. And for guitar, it was Gibson 1989 Les Paul Standard. And he... and... Yeah, in the first ever email that he sent me, he said that I started writing Salt when I was 15 or 16. I, fin I finished it right after I turned 18 in 1994. And I think the album was released in October, so I think that's already time when his birthday is. He's in his 40s right now. Like, I, he was 38 when I met him in 2015. And what I asked about what things inspired album's lyrics. I think it was. I think I mean Stupa masterpiece. Uh, so many things. A twenty-year-old's delusions of grandeur more than anything, though. And uh, then I asked. Um, Jeff has always said he always says that Skeleton King is his favorite album. Or no, he always says that Stupa masterpiece is his favorite album, but Skeleton King is his number one favorite JLJ song and and also Second Skin and I asked why Skeleton Skin is your favorite song of the album and he answered I just love the build up to the single chorus and then the winding down after looking back so much of JLJ was very 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 weighted of that zeitgeist I don't know did I pronounce that correctly that word I actually checked how to pronounce it, but I forgot. But Skeleton King always feels special to me. And yeah, this is all that I have to say for this 
video there's a lot of stuff that I'm talking about and I, I really hope that you enjoy these kind of videos where I'm like just talking about GLG because like for some reason GLG is a big thing for me as a fan because I'm like I'm leading the I don't like to like to say that I'm leading the fan base, but I'm kind of the guy who got everything, everything for the people like Jeff and 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 like giving information and music and all that. Like I don't, I don't. I actually said in in Discord that I'm feeling like I don't want to feel like dictator. And someone said that I don't, I'm not a dictator. And and and. Without me, we wouldn't have what we have now. But yeah, like I don't want to like have full responsibility or anything. But I'm kind of like putting everything together for the fan base and and for GLJ, GLJ's like letting people know about GLJ and so on. But of course, like. <clears throat> Everyone who who does stuff like this, everyone is equal in my opinion. Like, I'm just glad that people enjoy JLJ and and of course whatever else Jeff is working on, newborn and and also that project called Father War Water Wormwood and Faded Satan's. That is actually pretty cool cool music. If you haven't checked that out, go check it out. It's it's on my channel. At least one of the songs. There's also two others, but I chose that song because it it's kind of the I think it's the best best song out of them all. It's also a really interesting one too. And I hope that you will enjoy what Jeff is bringing for us, it, like that Motherhead cover and and also the new new single and finally finally the album. That is coming out, the pragmatic panic, and apparently that that motherhead cover will be the heaviest of J of the new JLJ. Like actually, like that's what Jeff said. But I don't mind. I actually enjoy those like quiet songs or calm songs, stuff like stuff from the from the first album soul, like like slow sinking and slow sinking and um, also also chance to die like it's really like it's really moody and, and sad and all that and also like stuff like dilate and and second skin and all that like it's it's really great like all of old GLJ is really awesome in their own ways and each album has something so something worth listening and yeah i also also forgot to mention that someone made in the website called rate your music where children's albums are presented someone made a review review for for the great escape from paradise saying that uh, it's an album that does not hesitate to use violence and yeah i think it's True, but still, for masterpiece is really that that should have that honor since it's really dark, it's really heavy, it's really angry, aggressive, and all that. Like, it's the darkest Chelsea album. And when you when I think about the saddest or least positive one, I think Salt maybe it ha it has kind of that feel on some songs and so on. But yeah, I think this is it for the for this video. I'll just stop recording this this audio and start working on the video. I have some stuff I have to add to this. I have to add that an exit sample so you hear it and also some other stuff. But yeah, uh, one last thing before I stop. Um, I'm thanking everyone who's enjoying JLJ and other stuff that Jeff does and and please let your friends know about JLJ so more people would know about this band because me and many others agree that it's, it's really great music and I like like Jeff has joked that the, oh, I think it's it's pretty serious that like compared to man's compare like JLJ versus Marilyn Manson like 
Mario Mass is just pop music compared to JLJ, especially like some some albums like The Great Escape from Paradise and Stupid Masterpiece, and I agree on that. But yeah, I just I just enjoy that you enjoy these videos and what I'm bringing out to you, information, music, and all that. And uh, of course, I also I'll, I'll, I always follow follow what Chef Chef asks. So if he wants something removed or something, I'll do that because because well, I'm just a fan. I don't know this music, and yeah, I'm I want to honor Jeff, not honor, but I I want to respect Jeff, and so on. But yeah, I think this video is, video is long enough, so thank you and goodbye.